thank you very much for that. Um, I'm going to shortly be handing over um, to our guest speaker, Juliet Nichols from Pineapple Audio Productions. So thank, uh, thank you, Juliet, for, um, for supporting us today and doing the, doing the podcast with us. I'm really excited about having Juliet with us. She's um, really experienced. She's got over 10 years experience in doing podcasts um, and has done all sorts of different ones. But um, most recently, the Love Island podcast. So if you ever watch that and listen to the podcast, she was the person behind that. So um, got lots of very um, useful insights to share with us whether you've had a little go at podcasting or you've never done it before and and want to give it a try um so julia is going to do um a presentation for probably about 20 minutes half an hour and then uh we'll have a chance to go to some questions now we can't see you as you can probably guess so um if you have a question for um for juliet please just put it in the Q&A box. Don't put it in the chat uh, because we won't pick it up there. Put it in the Q&A and I'll keep an eye on that. And then when Juliet's finished, we'll be able to um, ask her some of the questions and hopefully get some answers for you. We are recording this session today and it's going to be available on our on-demand page. So uh, don't worry too much about taking notes. Um, it'll all be there. You'll be able to watch it back uh, when you're trying to do your first podcast. So um, the final thing I want to say before I hand over to Juliet is um, if you're not yet an FSB member we'd love to have you as part of the FSB family uh, so do check out the FSB website at www.fsb.org.uk and you can see all the member benefits there and you can even book to speak to a membership advisor to find out uh, how we could benefit your business but that's enough from me um, thank you for listening and again thank you for joining us today and Juliet over to you Thank you, Ruth. Right, let me just share my slides with you. There we go. So, like Ruth said, I'm Juliet and I run Pineapple Audio Production. I'm so excited to be here with you today and to share a little bit about podcasting. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me, a little bit about Pineapple, and then talk you through some ideas about becoming a podcast guest, starting your own podcast, and like Ruth said, we'll have some time for questions at the end. So. Pineapple Audio Production is a bespoke podcast company. It's all about making experiences that matter for our clients, for our hosts, for podcast guests. And we work with businesses, brands, individuals, um, really to make their podcast from the concept, from that very beginning of an idea, all the way to headphones when we're listening. And we've recently worked with podcasts like Grazia, Metro, CNBC. We're making one for the BBC at the moment. And like Ruth said, we've made the Love Island podcast for ITV as well, which has been really exciting, quite the experience. Um, but we also love working with small businesses and individuals, like I say, and that might be in guiding them through the entire process or in a kind of consultancy capacity where we're kind of just that, that critical friend along the way helping. So I've always had an interest in learning and development and growing. And I actually uh, ran the Women's Network at the biggest commercial radio group in the UK, which is where I started out in my career. So uh, that's why I'm really excited to be here today because I think this stuff is so important and really, really adds to us in our businesses and just in our lives in general. So as I said, I worked for the biggest commercial radio group in the UK, Global, and I worked for Heart, the biggest commercial radio station in the UK at that point. And I was an audio producer and, and that's all I wanted to do. When I was younger, I worked in um, hospital radio. They gave me a show when I was 16, which was fascinating. I worked in, um, in community radio. I, I did some student radio when I was studying. And then I really worked my way up doing interning. I volunteered, I covered holiday at radio stations all across the UK for the BBC and for Global, getting that grounding because I was so driven to be an audio producer for Heart. And when I got that dream job, it was in Leicester Square in a real radio hub so in the global building it's not just heart it's capital it's classic fm it's radio x it's smooth it's such an exciting place to be if you're wanting to make audio like i wanted to and i was making all the bits really that go between the songs so um, the jingles the trails anything kind of commercial and my audio is listened to by 10 million people every week so it was a really motivating really exciting place to be 
Um, there were also loads of celebrities wandering around, which was very exciting for me. From one moment when Hugh Grant walked past me, I thought I actually stopped breathing for a second. Um, I worked with Emma Bunton every day and I even did a session with the Minions once, which was, which was a lot of fun. So it was a really exciting place to be. Um, but I got more and more kind of asked to make podcasts. And to begin with, I really didn't know what podcasts were. Like I said, I was making short form audio, 30 second trails, 10 second jingles. And I'd have people come to me, I had a little booth and say, can you just mix this podcast? It's 30 minutes long. And I kind of didn't know what they were talking about, but I said, yes, as you do. And I learned more and more about it. And in the end, I realized that there would be a business in this, that there was an interest in this, that people wanted this kind of experience. So I came up with a pineapple brand. I wanted something that was feminine, that was memorable, and something that was a little bit larger than the one person team that I was in at that stage. Uh, and that was four years ago. So we've had a number of highlights for Pineapple along the way. I mentioned Love Island, but there was also a podcast called Finding Feel Good that we made last year. And we were lucky enough, and I say we, uh, it was myself producing and a now very good friend of mine, Jade English, presenting. She was on The Apprentice and then kind of found her way out of that commercial world and wanted to explore holistic therapies. So we went to Bali for a month and we recorded a ton of experiences from ice baths to ecstatic dance, to sound healing, to tantra. We recorded all these experiences. We spoke to experts in real life and we made that into a podcast. And that was hugely exciting. Uh, like I say, we also produced the Love Island podcast this year for ITV. And it was a huge, huge undertaking. So we made 51 podcasts over eight weeks. We worked six nights a week. So the TV show would air and then we'd make the podcast. So we'd be recording and editing and getting it live overnight. It was 54,000 minutes of production time during that couple of months. And we became the number one TV and film podcast in the chart. The listening figures were eye-watering. I've never seen anything like it. And it was massively, massively motivating. There was also a team of, 10 of us across the project uh, to, to bring it together from you know socials to to recording to editing to mixing to talent booking it was a huge huge project so let's get into podcasting what is podcasting well technically it's the practice of using the internet to make digital recordings of broadcasts available for downloading to a computer or mobile device that's the technical description but in reality it's an incredible way of sharing information. It's this long form, recorded, edited, slick way of marketing to an audience and giving them something to listen to and learn from. And I'm sure you all have your favorite podcasts. I know I have mine aside from the ones that we produce. I'm a huge, huge fan of Stephen Bartlett and his Diary of a CEO podcast. And I'll probably mention him along the way because I think there's a lot to learn from what he's doing. And if there's one podcast, I'd say, aside from Finding Feel Good and, and obviously Love Island, if that's something that you're into, um, to, to take note of, I think it's possibly his podcast. So why would you want to be a podcast guest? This is the first way that you could get involved in podcasting. And maybe it's a good entry level option for you if you're thinking about starting your own podcast, because it will give you an insight into that experience. So. It's obviously an experience of public speaking, which is never a bad thing. That's one reason why you might want to be a podcast guest. But it also gives you a kind of reputational boost. It gives you that kudos. It proves you an expert in your field. And it gives you a chance to speak about your chosen subject. And it will be edited. So you're guaranteed to sound slick and sound like you know what you're talking about in a good podcast. It's also content to share on your socials and on your website. And that stuff is really important these days. Uh, it allows you to talk to your target market directly. And that is key. You know, if you're choosing a podcast to be a guest on, that coordinates with your own target market. Podcasts are really, really, podcast listeners, sorry, are really, really engaged. It's been proven that people listen to podcasts way more intently than they listen to radio, than they flick through magazines, than they watch TV. They listen through their headphones, they listen in the car, they listen, you know, with, with intent. So they're also paid sometimes as well. That's incidental. But good reasons to be a podcast guest. Now, how do you go about being a podcast guest? Really, it's about searching out those podcasts that you think, like I say, connect with your target market, 
who are you wanting to speak to and who is already speaking to those people that's the key now when you found those podcasts have a look in the show notes and reach out now you might be reaching out to the podcaster directly if it's an independent podcast or you might be reaching out to a production company like pineapple and either way you want to be telling them these key things what you want to talk about why that will be interesting to their audience prove your credibility and talk about how you'll share the episode so what do you bring to the table what is your expertise that will be interesting to their target market how does it connect with what they're doing with their brand the podcast that they're building and you know a podcast really for lots of people it is their baby so show that level of interest make sure you've listened to it show how much you also love it and what's your story what will you be sharing maybe share some anecdotes that you will want to talk about on the episode give them that idea of your credibility and yes talk about how you'll promote it because ultimately aside from making a podcast the marketing side of podcasting is massively massively important so if you have a following on socials or you have a newsletter you could share it through let them know and the final thing you want to talk about is your technical expertise which you will now have if you didn't already the tech that you will need very straightforward this rode usb mini mic you can get it on amazon it's about 90 pounds it's an investment worth making if this is something that you want to do it's super simple you plug it directly into your laptop maybe stack it on some books or the box it comes in because you want the microphone to be about here not down below or up here or over here or over here directly in front of you and you and that's and that's it plug it in you need some headphones like the ones i've popped on there big headphones are great those kind of headphones are absolutely fine like the old school apple headphones and that's it aside from that you just need a quiet location ideally somewhere with soft furnishings an echoey uh, background is never a good is never a good look. So if you're avoiding kitchens and conservatories, you're on the right track. If you're recording in a living room or a bedroom, curtains closed, ideally, then then that's ideal. So tell them about the tech. Now, starting your own podcast. Why would you want to start your own podcast? Well, it's an easy way to market yourself, and you can direct and connect. <laughs> you can connect directly that's exactly what i want to say connect directly with your potential customers so whether they're listening to the podcast and you've marketed to them and that's how you're reaching them or whether you reach out to them and ask them to come on as a guest it's a really good way to connect with people you know a, a, a potential customer that you want to speak with more invite them onto your podcast and you've got half an hour or an hour of their time there not selling but connecting and that's massively important with podcasting, you're in control of the content. So if it's, you know, it can be as long or as short as you like. Some podcasts are 10 minutes long, some podcasts are an hour and a half long. All the research shows that 22, 25 minutes is the optimum length for a podcast. And if you think about it, that makes sense. I know my attention span is, is you know, sits around about there. Also, the average journey time might be around there. So if we think about how people are listening or um, that, that makes perfect sense. And make sure, you know, this is something that you will be passionate about. And I think that's that's another great reason why you would want to start your own podcast is because you want to talk about something that you're passionate about and you want to put time and energy into it. And it will give you great content then to shout about, something to share and, you know, build that personal brand of yours. And they can make money every now and again as well. So how would you go about it? There are a variety of steps that I will take you through. A production process that you will want to go through. Um, we talked about the tech. There are other elements to that. So you might want to record on Zoom. It's an option. There are also systems like Riverside and Clean Feed. They'll record you in high quality directly from your microphone. And that's reaching a kind of professional level, the, the type, type of sort of systems that we would use at Pineapple. Now here's the production process. The first thing and really the thing to spend as much time as possible on is the concept. What podcast do you want to make? What do you want it to be about? What are you passionate about to make initially say six to 10 episodes? That would be your initial series. And you know, maybe it would go on longer than that. What will keep you fired up? 
And then you get into pre-production. So turning that concept into a script outline. And that script might look like a kind of scripted introduction, talking about what the podcast is going to be about, who you are, what your credibility is, and who your guest is. And then you might want to talk about some kind of, you might want to look at some sections there. In the main body of the podcast, you wanted maybe bullet points, three different sections of your podcast episode. And you might want to script an outro as well. So thanking your guests, thanking listeners, letting them know where they can find more information and reminding them to review your podcast and follow it and rate it and all that good stuff that helps other people to find it. So that's your script. Then you'll want to think about guest booking. And hopefully this is kind of the guests have come up in your concept, kind of the concept section of this. So thinking about who you'd want to speak to, those potential clients, those people that you know who are interested in this, this area. It's then about locking in a date to record with them. And that's not always easy. Then we will get onto production. So we've talked about the kind of tech for that you'll need for recording. So that microphone, those headphones, uh, a way of recording. So possibly um, Zoom, Riverside, clean feed, and then you would want to get into post-production. Now there are a variety of ways of editing. Some podcasts don't edit at all. Being an audio producer and obviously running Pineapple, editing is my first love and I would always be sad to hear a podcast that hasn't been edited. You know, it's, you, you want to make it sound as slick as possible. You might want to add some music. And there are tons and tons of different pieces of software that can help you with that. Um, audition is industry standard. Pro Tools is my first love. Um, but they are different levels of investment. And to a certain extent, you can learn these things online, but they do take time. And then the final stage, very, very important stage, would be to market and let people know about your podcast. And social media is massive for this. Word of mouth is you know, still the main way that people hear about podcasts. The way that I told you, oh, my, one of my favorite podcasts, Diary of a CEO, that kind of conversation, whether it happens on socials or whether it happens in person, you know, that's the conversation that you want to be having, that you want people to be having and making sure you have all those bits and pieces, the, so, the, the social asset um, that really help get the word out there. So that's your production process. Now, if that is all sounding like something that you want to do, but maybe you would want a little bit of extra help. This is where companies like Pineapple come in. You know, if you want a step-by-step -step guide, that's what I was talking about in terms of the concept, the headphones, that's what Pineapple does. But we also offer a kind of consultancy service where we will be that critical friend, we'll be that guide. It might just be an hour to help you get set up and to put in place all those different parameters and all those different steps that you'll need to look at um, if you didn't want to just do it yourself. And this is what you will want to end up with. So you want to end up with a final podcast episode. You want to end up with a podcast episode title and the show notes that outline exactly what's going to be talked about in that episode. You might want to look at five to eight minute teaser episodes. So if your podcast is 30 to 40 minutes long, maybe you want those teaser episodes to really grab people's attention. It's another thing that Diary of the CEO does really well and we're doing with a number of our podcasts. Uh, you would want to end up with a series trailer to really get people excited about that first episode before it comes out. You might want to have an embeddable player on your website and then QR codes, videograms, audiograms. They're all those social bits and pieces that really help get the word out there about your podcast. Now, we're going to have some time for questions, which I'm really excited about. Um, thank you so much for listening. And if you do want to connect, I would love to hear from you LinkedIn, email, Instagram, just, uh, yeah, please get in touch. And like I say, thank you very, very much for listening today. Thanks, Julia. I think that's got us really all thinking about how we could get going. And I know I'm very excited about um, having a go at <laughs> doing a podcast. Um, I've just got the, the questions up here and we've had quite a few come through. So um, let's kick off with one about microphones. So you recommended a Rode USB mini microphone, but um, yeah. uh, one of the listeners has asked, What's, what makes you decide on the correct microphone? So do you go by price? reviews um 
or sound quality. Um, he says he's turned off a lot of podcasts because they sound so awful. And he also has followed up with a supplementary question, which is, um, would you have separate microphones for the host and the guest or can you share one? So could you talk a bit more about the kits, please? Of course I can. That's a really good question. And I agree with you. The podcast that maybe aren't using microphones, they do sound awful. And it, that's why it's worth investing in that stuff. It is a bit of a minefield, which is why I recommend one microphone specifically. I've tried a lot. Um, it's reviews, recommendations, all that stuff is great. But really, unless you've tried it in a variety of different circumstances, like I've been lucky enough to, you won't always know. Um, now, I'm talking about recording podcasts remotely, and that's a USB mic that I've, re I've recommended which means it plugs into your laptop, you record your end and your guest would record their end a little bit like we're talking today. Um, so you have options there. Maybe you'll get, you would want to send your guest the same microphone. We often do that at Pineapple, we'll courier microphones around the country because we want people to have the microphone. But you might also want them to just use AirPods, use headphones, and they would be in slightly lesser quality than you as the host. But you know, to a certain extent, that's okay. Um, as long as you're not recording on Zoom with no headphones in the conservatory, like I said, I think you're you're way further down the track than a lot of podcasts are already. That's great, thank you. And while we're talking about the technical side of things, uh, someone else has asked, how do you make podcasting accessible to all listeners? And are there any tools that you use? So if people maybe have hearing impairments, impairments and things, is there stuff that you can do to make sure you're more accessible? It's a really good question and it's something we're actually exploring a lot at the minute. So um, there are some great transcript websites that will be really helpful. They will transcribe your audio for you in minutes. It's not always perfect, but yes, it does work. So there's a couple of websites I'd recommend, one called Trint and one called Otter. Okay, I Trint. I like Otter. Trint. Trint. Trint with a T, T R. Okay. INT or Otter is a good one as well. Um, you, you, you know, it's it's relatively low cost. So if there even is a cost, and you can just input your audio, it will turn it into a transcript, and that's the kind of thing that you could then share in your show notes, and it becomes, you know, an accessible, slightly more accessible piece of content that way. That way. Um, but I think this is something probably worth exploring more and more. But that would be my main recommendation at this point. Something that we're doing. Oh, that's great. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, OK, so another thing that you mentioned during your talk was the potential to monetize a podcast. And um, uh, one of our listeners has asked, you know, how can you get started on that? Um, for example, are you able to charge people for coming on your podcast and, and that sort of thing? So um, what, what, what would you suggest if someone wanted to actually make money from their podcast? It's a very good question. It's a something that's growing definitely um there are a variety of ways I think I haven't heard of people charging people to come on their podcast in all honesty it's becoming more and more so that you need to pay people to be on your podcast so that is an avenue I probably wouldn't go down there are a couple of options though um when you load your podcast and this is something that we could go into more is slightly complicated but when you load your podcast to Apple Spotify etc you will go through a company called a hosting site. There are a couple, um, Acast and Audio Boom are the really famous ones. Now companies like that can insert ads into your podcast. They often want you to reach a certain number of listeners before they do that, which is why I kind of say this caveat, podcasts can make money sometimes because to a certain extent, you have to go some of the way yourself before companies like that will help you out. Once you get to, X amount of thousand listeners they might be looking for, then they will insert ads into your podcast and you will get a cut and they will get a cut. So that's one way. It's actually quite simple if you're reaching those numbers. Another way is to look for sponsors yourself. And actually, this is the way that you'll keep retain the most cash. Um, if you're speaking to businesses that are also, like I say, looking at the same target market as you, want to speak to those people who are maybe engaged in other things that you're doing that you've got a relationship with then maybe charging them a bit per episode to have you know, their name mentioned, to have uh, what we would call a live read, which I, I imagine you've probably heard when people kind of endorse things in the middle of their podcast. Oh, you might have heard about this X, Y, and Z. Um, giving them 30 to 60 seconds of the podcast time to talk about their brand and for you to talk about what they're doing could be another really good way 
of monetizing. But like I say, this is something that's growing over time. It's not a given, but it's definitely worth considering, especially if you do have access to kind of a larger market. Oh, that's great. So a bit of a passive income potentially for your business. If that's you a dream. Make, yeah, make a success of your, your podcast. Yeah, no, that's really good. Um, another question we've had is um, about the scripting that you mentioned. So, you know, having a scripted intro and a scripted outro, which was a new word. I hadn't heard the word outro before. Actually. I'm going to be using that now. Um, the um, They've asked, do, is, are there any templates out there to sort of like, help you think about it if you haven't done it, if you haven't done it before? That's a really good question. It's not something that I've done, actually, but possibly something that I could be offering on our website because it's, you know, that's something that is, is quite straightforward, really. You want an introduction, you want th maybe three sections with some bullet pointed kind of questions or thoughts and then a scripted outro. It can be as simple as that. But that's really good food for thought because maybe that's something that I could be offering on a website as a kind of template outline. Yeah. Okay. No, great. Thank you. Um, I thought it was good your point about um, asking people to review your to review your podcast. So if they like it, to review it so that others want to listen to it as well and, and maybe share it. You know, people always need yeah. that little jog. Um, so it's it's good to good to mention that as much as possible, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, people want when they're listening to and engaging with your podcast and, you know, if they keep coming back for it, they, they want to know how they can help you out. And that is the key way. If you want people to kind of, aside from word of mouth and socials, if you want people to find your podcast. It's the reviews and it's the follows and it's that, you know, the Apple five star. That's massive. So if yeah. people can do that for you, then that's great. So if you want people to be able to access your podcast from your website, you mentioned um, embedded players in your website. Someone has asked, is that a complicated thing to do or how would you go about doing that? It's not complicated if you go via certain systems. Now, I was talking about the hosting platforms before. So Audio Boom and Acast, that's how you get your podcast loaded onto Apple, Spotify, etc. Um, I won't go too deep into that because once you sign up on their website, they guide you through it. And part of that offering is an embeddable player. So if you go into the Audio Boom site, and I really should be getting a cut for them because I talk about them so much. They're brilliant and they make the whole thing very simple. So they, they show you where to upload your audio. They help you pop it onto Apple, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera. And they give you access to like the code, the code for your embeddable player. Uh, and there's different styles of embeddable player and they do look really slick and really professional and they're obviously a good way to share what you're doing on your website so that's how I'd suggest you go about it and it's really simple oh no that's great thank you and in fact you lead me nicely on to another question that we've had which was what were your views on Acast because <laughs> um uh, someone is wondering whether that's a good place to start or is there another one that's more intuitive for editing for example and and actually another question was is there some free software for editing so so you know if someone's not edited before and wants to have to have a go themselves is it complicated <laughs> and how do you get well started? okay so two slightly different things acast and audio boom are your hosting sites so they're your facilitator for uploading your audio and getting it onto Apple and Spotify, et cetera. So my views on Acast, they're brilliant. Audio Boom are also brilliant. They're your top two players in that market. There are others, but they're your top two players. Um, so I would be looking, if I was you, I'd look at both and see which site you find more intuitive. Like I say, for me, Audio Boom is the one that I love. I do also work with Acast. I think they're, they're both great. So maybe it's worth just looking for yourself and seeing which one feels better for you. But it, you know in reality they do a similar thing and um, then oh, no, Sorry, no, that's fine so I, I was going to jump into the editing question but do you have a question about the um no I was just going to comment and say uh, for me it would be could I do it on my laptop or do I have to do it on my mobile phone because being a woman of a certain age I really struggle with doing stuff on my phone so it would maybe be what was easier to use you know on my laptop really and some of them like have preferences for going on the phone don't they yeah, both of those will work on, on all platforms. I tend to do all the stuff on my laptop because I prefer the bigger screen. <laughs> so yeah, I think, you know, laptop's actually your best option. And in a way, you'll probably end up recording on your laptop. So if you're uploading, probably use your laptop. I think that makes perfect sense. Um, just jumping to the editing question because I, I want to make sure I answer that as well. Editing is a, a whole world. I 
probably spent 10 years learning it, but it doesn't have to be that complicated. Like I said, Pro Tools, which is professional software that we'd use in the radio station, does take a long time. There are loads of different nuances, but yes, there are free pieces of software. One that I would recommend is Audacity. It's practically where everyone starts on editing. It's free. It's very straightforward. And if you're into that kind of stuff, there's loads of tutorials on YouTube. If you're open to learning that way, you can. It's not too it's not too fiddly. There are ways of learning it. It can be a little bit clunky at times compared to, like I say, softwares like Pro Tools, or there's one I would say is kind of in between called Audition, which is an Adobe software. And um, that's also great. You can learn a lot about that from YouTube. But like I say, you have to pay for that. So if you're getting started, Audacity probably is your best best place to start. No, thank you. And I have tried Audacity actually, and it was really Great. easy, very intuitive to use. So even for someone like me who's never edited anything before, it was I actually managed to do it. So um, I definitely back you up on that one. That's um, good. Someone else has said, "Can I record a ten-minute piece and call it a podcast, or does it have to be with somebody else?" No, I think that's a really good point. I, I always go down this route of talking about um, your podcast guest, and you know, but it doesn't have to be like that at all. You know, if you've got enough to say for ten minutes, then go for it. I think that's great. A podcast is absolutely valid at ten minutes, as it is at forty minutes. Like I said, all the stats say twenty minutes is great, but I, I love a 10 minute podcast. I think, you know, you can get a lot out of something in 10 minutes and then get on with your day. So no, all power to you. If you, if you have something that you, you want to say and you've, you've got enough to say yourself, you don't need a guest. Of course not. No, I think there's a lot. You can do a lot with one voice. Oh, that's good. And how often should you podcast? Another good question. Um, the, the regularity of podcasting is the key. So um, releasing your podcast on a set day at a set time so that people get into a routine so some podcasts are monthly some some fortnightly weekly is the optimum daily is obviously great and something like love island re you really see the listeners increase because of the regularity and that's that's the game plan with it but if you're consistently releasing a podcast once a week on a wednesday morning for example then you're in a really good place because people hopefully will come to expect that on a wednesday morning so yeah weekly and, and keep it to the same day and time Oh, no, that's really good. And oh, this is a really tricky question, actually. How do you make oh. a podcast that people want to listen to? <laughs> <laughs> that's a very uh, that's a very interesting question. And if I had the answer to that, I would be, um, you know, a millionaire, I think. Um, I think a lot of it from my perspective is, you know, and I'm sure any podcast listener would say the same. If you're passionate about it, that's the key you know you want to listen to a podcast that where someone's really engaged in what they're talking about that engages you and if we're looking at podcast success it's that it's having something that people want to keep coming back to so what can they learn from and what can they walk away from feeling really positive and feeling like they're enthused about what you're talking about I think that's you know that's the truth if you you know if you're talking about making a good podcast the consistency that you know tenacity to keep going um and you know marketing it and letting people know about it is really key but I think from your perspective getting started is having something that you know that you will continuously want to push and be passionate about I would say I guess it's also thinking about who's the or who is your target market for your business as well if you're trying to promote your business with it it's like what would your customers want to know if you're trying to use it as a as a as a sales tool rather than um necessarily what you just like talking about <laughs> yeah 100 percent. well hopefully those things go hand in hand right hopefully what you like talking about is also your business which is also what your you know your clients um like to hear about so fingers crossed those things all all collaborate and become one wonderful podcast that everyone wants to be involved in i think that's the ultimate really Yes, no, definitely. You want people talking about it to all their friends, don't you? Yeah. Um, on the more serious side, um, someone has asked about um, the legal side of things. So do you ever get into sort of contracts for podcast guests or, you know, uh, rules about how they can ref like use the podcast that they've made with you and that, that sort of thing? Have you explored that at all? Yeah, I mean, with the legal stuff, I would say I'm not an expert and I have I get legal advice on this this stuff when I need to because it's just not my area of expertise but yes that is important 
definitely we will have agreements with podcast guests which outline exactly that you know who's sharing it where are they sharing it those discussion points that become a legal a legal part of it um it is important and getting more and more important as podcasts i think become a big business and become you know really really mainstream and viable so what i would say is yes it's worth exploring possibly with someone who knows a bit more about the legal side of things but it's a very good point and i think it's it's worth keeping in mind uh, and not kind of just blindly going into this stuff without looking at it a bit more fully i hope that's helpful sorry i can't be more specific no really. no, no definitely and i would say to anyone who's an fsb member you've got the 24-hour legal helpline so if you're concerned about that at all you can just call up and they will give you some advice on that but i would have thought when you get going you can probably just invite people on who you know are going to be um uh you know good about it and and it's only when you you, you have a much more sort of professional podcast really you probably need to need to be worrying about these things but um but obviously I'm not a legal expert either so <laughs> let's not <laughs> wait me on that one okay so I'm just scrolling down the questions here uh okay oh is podcast guidance and consultancy affordable I'm a small business with a modest budget yes definitely um this is something I'd be really happy to talk to you about um individually whoever is asking the question but yes definitely it's not something that we kind of um block into specific packages you could say i just want an hour i just want half an hour asking you all these questions that i have and i really need the answers to them and we do that very often it's actually a real passion of mine to um to help as much as i can especially other people who are running their own businesses i love connecting with people who are doing that and if i can you know, like I say, offer half an hour or an hour. It doesn't have to be, oh, I need five hours worth of help or 10 hours worth of help. It can be just that initial guide. And I love being that guide for small businesses to get help get them started. I actually did one session with a company in America. We did an hour together a couple of weeks ago and they just emailed me the other day saying, we've implemented this, 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 this. We're so excited about it. Just feel refreshed and supported. And I think that's the whole point of it really. So yeah, it doesn't have to be um endless amounts of time or money so what I would say to that is definitely happy to speak to you about it just drop me an email or or message and we can talk about it in more detail oh you might regret saying that on here you're going to be inundated <laughs> with your email. oh no I love that I love all that, I love that. Um, okay so we've got another question which is about you know uh, podcast being successful so um Someone's asking, is there a rough conversion rate for turning a podcast listener into a paying client? So they're a, um, a psychotherapist and coach. And so they I guess they're saying, is it worth the effort? Like, how would I know how long do I need to keep going before I think right, this isn't working for me or I'm not doing it right? That's a really good question. I wish I had the answer to that as well. If I had a conversion rate, that would be <laughs> wonderful. I, I'm not sure it's quite as simple as that. I think it's also possibly a bit of a personal thing and, and that's probably something that I would suggest you do as part of your concept outline is something we do with our clients you know what is success for you are you looking for x amount of clients is it about more people knowing about what you're doing you know is it is it about you getting that experience in public speaking or you know having some content to share on your socials there are a variety of things I think come into uh, aside from the direct sales come into podcasting um and I, I i do think it's slightly more of a personal thing like i said if you say you go and do a, an initial series that might be six to set to ten episodes that would be your kind of initial starting point then take a break and reassess and look at you know whether you do have conversions and if that is important to you or whether you're getting enough value out of the experience itself and how many downloads you're building um, because these things do take time it's it's a you know it's a it's a scale that grows and you know realistically on some of the latest stats if you've got more than 26 people listening to your podcast you're still in the top 50 percent of podcasts wow. so you know there's there's a way to go with this stuff um but yes i don't i don't know about exact conversions but i think there's probably a bit more to it not to say that there can't be sales that come out of it as well though 
No, that's really helpful. Thank you. And I can imagine that if you've got a bank of podcasts about your specialist subject, actually, it's it's not just people listening to them, but it's also being able to refer potential customers to listen to them. So you, you know, if they're asking you questions, they're unsure whether to buy from you or not. You can say, well, I've done a podcast on this subject. You know, why don't you listen to it? And then it sort of establishes you as an expert in your field, doesn't it? Yeah, it's that kudos. It's that personal brand that all definitely comes into it as well. So I don't know whether there's you know direct sales or whether it kind of like comes further down the line there's there's something in that as well I think definitely I mean they do say that people have got to see you at least seven times in different places before they'll buy from you so this is just yeah. another way that you raise people's awareness of what you do I guess um, a more practical question and um, someone's asked about having music on your podcast so obviously we need to be concerned about copyright issues um, so is there are there any sites where you can get free music to use for your podcast that you've come across very good question there are lots of ways you can go about this kind of music thing and i do think possibly because i come from a radio background the music side of things is really important i would call it uh branding musical branding for your podcast you know what do you want that sound to represent how does it reflect your brand yourself how does it set the tone for the podcast all that stuff is really really important um there are a variety of ways of going about it you know top of the shop is find a composer, get them to make something bespoke. I mean, that is just the absolute dream. There are lots of podcasters, um, sorry, um, composers that don't charge the earth as well. You might know somebody who makes music in their spare time. Loads of people do that now. Um, and I can also connect you with composers if that's of interest to you. But like I say, it doesn't have to cost the earth, especially people who are doing this, you know, as a passion. So that's an option. But yes, there are websites that you can use or you can, you can, if it's, there are free websites so youtube for example does offer a free music service um you just go googling that and you will find it um you know there's there's nothing to pay there's no concerns about copyright the quality is in my opinion questionable but like i say coming from a radio background this is a sliding scale um in the middle there there are sites uh, like audio network it's a great site you can pay 50 or 60 pounds and you you can use that track so that's worth investigating a, a kind of what what we would call like a buyout so you've bought that track you can use it on your podcast job done so there, there are a few options there that's really good and actually we did a, a another one of these webinars recently on uh the use of images and copyright and the clear message from that was don't necessarily trust that something's free um, because you don't know that the person that's written it or taken it has necessarily given permission for that to use it in the way that you're using it so it's better to have something in writing that says that you can use the image or the piece of music in the way that you're going to use it to protect yourself should you have any problems and the fines can be quite definitely. big so i would yeah i would definitely say getting something where you've paid for the license and you know you can use it is, is a is a good idea um okay yeah. so someone else has said is it better to record in blocks of time so to do multiple podcasts in one day when you're in the headspace or to maybe spread it out you know uh, throughout the week so could you do like a whole month's worth of podcasts uh, on one day what what would you suggest conceivably you absolutely could I think uh, again it's a personal preference thing so yeah maybe you want to block out a day and do four podcasts across the day I know I've done that for one client we actually yeah we did six in one day and we kind of did an episode took a break did an episode took a break did an episode took, and you know and it worked because everyone was in one place and in the right headspace as you say so yes it's totally possible possibly to begin with you might want more time between your recordings though and that's I would say would be more for reflection than anything else so maybe you want to do an episode take a listen to it maybe do that initial edit on it see if there are ways that you would go about the questioning differently next time or something that you'd want to tweak with the intro and outro i think possibly for those first few episodes that's really useful and then beyond that yeah why why not do a couple in one day if you've got the the energy and the headspace for it but i think that's what it comes down to can you bring the energy that you would want to you know your listeners to hear can you bring that more than than you know one for one episode um and you probably know that better than anybody else really as, as an individual no that's that's really useful thank you and do podcasts have to be standalone episodes someone's asking or can they can you sort of do them in parts 
Oh, that's a good question. I think if you're going to have a long podcast, so if it is going to be an hour and a half long, there's nothing wrong with doing that in part. I also love the concept of bonus content. So I know I mentioned these kind of teaser episodes. So if you have a 40 minute podcast, you might want a five or eight minute version. So in a way, anything that adds more to your podcast feed is a good thing. So if you you do have a longer episode and you break it down into two or three parts, what that means is that if you're releasing them on separate days, people are going to get a notification on their phone that something new is showing up on your podcast feed more than once. And that's a great thing. The more people can be talking about that stuff, the better. The more people are hearing about that stuff, the better. So yes, I don't think there's a problem with that at all. In my opinion, if you've got an hour and a half long podcast, people are probably going to listen in sections anyway, or maybe switch off. So not a bad idea, particularly in that set of circumstances. Yeah, no, that 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 makes a lot of sense. Mm. Um, I'm just having a look around here. So uh, lots of questions. Yes, there's <laughs> loads of questions coming in. So thank you, everybody who's posted questions up. Um, quite a lot of people are asking about things that they've maybe missed or haven't had earlier in the earlier in the. Uh, webinar well I just remind everybody that we are recording this so uh, you will be able to watch it back so don't worry if you've missed something you can watch it back and write down all the details um, and pause it and then uh, watch a bit more so so um, that'll be available very soon on the FSB on demand page so uh, someone else is asking whether well how do you decide whether you do because video is a big thing at the moment and I know that's not your field but someone's saying well okay so if you're thinking well I could do a video or I could do a podcast how could I decide what do you think are the the deciding factors for saying right this is the right topic for a podcast well the interesting thing is actually podcasting is becoming more and more visual as time goes on. So we're doing more and more video content of podcasts. So I would almost say, do both. <laughs> Film your podcast. Okay. Use it, you, do both. You know, record your podcast. If you're recording it remotely, like we've been talking about, maybe you want to hit record on the Zoom and take some of those clips and turn them into reels, turn them into stories. That way you've got a double whammy, you can do both. Um, I would say that's probably the most beneficial. And I would say a supplementary thing, if you're going to, if you are recording your podcast, doing a reel talking about that podcast does, the algorithms do seem to work really well in terms of promoting things via reels. So like I say, do both and do a supplementary reel to promote what you're doing on your podcast. Oh, okay. So you just get lots of bang for your buck from doing the one, doing the one thing. Yeah. It sounds really I think cool. so. Definitely. So um, another question is, how can I get my podcast to be heard internationally? So when I upload it, is it available internationally and or is it yeah. are there just UK based sites to upload it to? No, that's the great thing about podcasting is it is international and in so many ways, you know, now we're recording things remotely. Your guests might be down the road, but they might also be across the other side of the world. And, you know, we're regularly recording podcasts with people in all parts of the world. And that's that's fantastic and yeah they're accessible internationally so it's out there for everyone to listen to marketing it and letting people know about it obviously word of mouth in your own network is great but that's the power of social media that's the power of something like like LinkedIn or Twitter you know Instagram people can find it all over the world and if you've got those hashtags on there if you're getting those ratings on Apple you know the reviews people will find it all over the world if they're they're searching for the kind of content that you are providing which is amazing really great yeah no it's really good if you want to have an international profile for your for your business definitely yeah um someone else is asking about the in-person or via zoom um options so if you're just starting out do you think it's better to have your guest in the room with you or to be doing it over zoom would you have a preference I think if you're starting out and you're wanting to produce this yourself, then recording remotely is your best friend. Because if you start recording in person, the tech becomes more complicated. Um, ideally, at that point, you need like a mixing desk as well as mic stands. It all becomes slightly more complicated. And I think there's an element of comfort in recording in your own home as well. I've noticed that a lot with, with podcasters that I'm working with. You know, you, if you can sit in your office, and speak to someone, you know, down the line, then 
that there's an element of comfort there that maybe if you're sat in a room looking at someone come you know might come through so yes I think recording remotely is wonderful it means you can schedule um around people's days a lot more easily they can be wherever they need to be so I think like I say especially to begin with if you're wanting to do this yourself buy a USB mic plug it in and record remotely because the quality can be really great and the levels of hassle are are less um you are slightly more in control of what's happening I think so that that would be my suggestion okay no that's that's really good advice thank you so yeah. taking you right back to the beginning of your talk when you were talking about being a guest on podcasts um someone has asked is there a is there a directory somewhere or like how can you find out who's looking for a guest if you wanted to be a guest on a, on a podcast that's a good question there are more and more podcast agencies doing this kind of work um so people are out there looking for guests um like I said, I think to a certain extent, especially to begin with, it might be about looking at those specific podcasts that are related to you and your brand and your business, as opposed to an agency, although they do have a job to do. I think especially when you're, you know, you're running your own business, being really direct about that niche and contacting them directly probably will be your most beneficial strategy. And probably more, it's more likely to get you onto that podcast. So I think looking at the podcast that you would like to be a guest on, getting to know them a bit better and approaching them directly. And like I said, through the show notes, you'll always find some form of contact detail, whether it's production company, whether it's the individual and reaching out to them directly. I think that's your best way. Um, or I'm sure Googling production, um, sorry, podcast guest agencies will be fruitful for you though, because they are out there. It's just whether they're as connected directly to your audience, which is really the key for you perhaps getting a benefit out of being a guest. Um, that's what I question with, with those kind of companies. But. Yeah, no, fair yeah. enough. Thank you. And I suppose that's good because then you, um, you can actually pick businesses um, or podcasts that you think would directly help your business. Uh, to yeah, and that's, really that really you. is the point, isn't it? So that yeah. you get the most out of it as a business owner and also that the podcast to get the most out of it better yeah. for everybody that way. Yeah, no, definitely. Oh, no, that's good. So um, another question here about uh, tone of voice. So someone is saying, you know, do I need to sound like a TV presenter uh, to be on a podcast or, you know, do I need media training or can I just sound like me? Like what works, what works best? I love this question so much. I wish more <laughs> radio presenters would ask this question because if you think about it, a lot of, and I love it, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love it. But we have a lot of radio presenters who are still stuck in the 90s playing the latest tunes. And um, there's a place for that. But I don't think podcasting is that place. So I would I would err far away from that. Um, there's no pressure to put on a certain voice or a certain tone of voice. Some people can do it really well and they do it really naturally and it is them. Totally fine. But I think personally, what we're looking for is a natural version of you that is the most engaging yes. that is the, you know that that natural um conversational tone is really why people listen to podcasts and aren't listening to the radio or you know commercial radio is a great example you've maybe got 60 seconds there to say everything you need to say and that means that sometimes things have to be delivered in a way that is quite well i've done it once i won't do it again <laughs> um but in podcasting we have more time we want to hear another human just talking, either talking to us or talking to other humans. So I think, um, no, just be you. That's really what we want to hear. And if you can be as relaxed as possible, and like I say, as conversational as possible, that's where you'll get the most benefit for yourself, for a listener and for your guest who will also be comfortable to just sound like themselves. It's yeah, no, that's good. And I think you're right. I think it needs to. Well, obviously, you're right. You're the expert. But um, but it's uh, you, know, you want to from podcasts that I've listened to, you want to feel like you're listening in on a conversation, don't you? Not exactly. that you're you're in a lecture theatre, you know, being talked at by some academic. You want to feel comfortable and that it's an easy listen. So I think, you know, people being themselves, but upbeat, like you were saying about, you of know, course. have you got that energy? You have to bring that energy to it so people want to stay, but, you know, they need to put your personality across. Definitely. Definitely. I love that question. 
Okay, so I think we are coming to the end of our time, but I'm going to ask you one last question, okay. which is, how would you judge whether a podcast is successful or not? That's a good question. And we could probably talk <laughs> for a long time about that. Like I said, there are certain stats. So if we were looking at, you know, how many listeners you want, which is, which is a first step for lots of podcasters. Like I said, if you're, if you're in the twenties in terms of downloads, then you're in that top 50% anyway. If you've got over 231 listeners, then you're in the top 10%. And yeah. if you've got over 3,062 downloads, then you're in the top 1%. So that's a, an, a, an obvious marker in terms of listeners, but I don't think it's all, a, all about the listenership. For me, actually, it's more about the engagement from your listeners. So, you know, this is a personal thing. Like I say, when you're setting up your concept, this is exactly what you want to think about. But for me, engagement from people, if they are talking about your podcast, if they're commenting on what you're doing, if you're hearing from them on socials and they're telling you how much they love it, you're hearing about it in those reviews, that's the win because you're with podcasting, you're trying to reach a niche target audience and really impact them. You know, they are listening, like I said, in a way that they're not listening to radio or TV. They're really listening intently if they like what you're doing. So if they're engaging with you, then that's a win, especially for a business who wants to you know, build their market, build their personal brand. That's when you know you've been successful from my perspective. Good answer. And I think that's a great way to, to close the session. So I, I just want to say thank you so much, Juliet, for, for giving us the benefit of your, um, your thoughts and your expertise today. And I think the number of questions that we've had shows how interested people have been. Uh, to everybody listening out there, I just want to remind you all um, that things uh, this has been recorded, so you can listen to it back. And um, in Juliet's slide, she's got her contact details and she very kindly <laughs> said she'd be happy to speak to people. So do take her up on that um, if you have any questions that we haven't answered today. Um, and um, if you've enjoyed this webinar, please do look at the FSB uh, website for more webinars. We have lots of them on lots of different topics. And um, if you like what we do at FSB, why not leave us a trust pilot review? Because that's um, a bit like having a rating for your podcast. It tells people that you think we're doing the right sort of stuff. Um, so um, thank you, everybody, for listening in. And thank you again, Julia for joining us today we we hope to um speak to you again soon so um thanks Thank very much. much bye